we're going to take a tour of the power board. The power board is what I hook up to the pedal power generator to distribute the power and also to smooth it out and make it uh, more acceptable for the different appliances I run. There are a number of different pieces on the power board. Let me point some of them out to you. The power comes in through this connection right here. This is a PowerWorks connector. They're Anderson power poles. And they are uh, sold in sets of two. These are 75 amperes, so they can handle more power than anyone can pedal. And they connect to this cable, which comes down. You can see it says 12 volts from the pedal generator. Comes down to this junction box. I have mounted a what's up meter on the junction box itself. Now inside the junction box, the main power cable, which you can see to the left, simply comes in and ruts out through the bottom of the junction box. This is it coming out right here. And it goes directly over here to my extremely connected Maxwell ultra capacitor. So the positive and the negative connect to the positive and negative of the ultra capacitor. That means the pedal generator is directly charging the ultra capacitor. It's going straight into the ultra capacitor. That also means that the pedal generator needs a diode. So it does have a diode to prevent the power from the ultra capacitor from flowing backward through the wire and running the generator as a motor and turning the flywheel when no one is on the pedal generator. So the diode is not part of the power board. I decided it should be part of the pedal generator instead just to make sure that there was always a diode there. I can't think of very many examples where you ever wouldn't want the diode. So I made it part of the generator instead of part of the power board. Once the electricity is in the ultra capacitor, it goes a number of different ways. You can see I've been experimenting with different ways to use the power. These very thick cables that you see here and here go down and connect up to this large inverter. So that's one way to get the power out. <clears throat> then the ultra capacitor is connected directly to the inverter with thick cables and they're short. And that's always the way you should hook up to an inverter with short, fat cables. And they need to be tight. So make sure that you use your wrench and tighten them up. They also go down to a set of Anderson power pole connectors right here. This set is for other appliances that I want to run directly off the ultra capacitor that don't need as much power as the inverter does. Then the final set of wires comes out right here. These two wires go over here through a 25 amp automotive fuse. I have the fuse on the positive wire. Technically you could put it on the negative, but I did positive. And that goes up into the bottom of the junction box and it comes out right here. What it does then is go into this what's up meter and come back out of the what's up meter through these connections. And when this is all reassembled, these two connections plug into those two connections. I'll just I won't actually make sure they're assembled for the movie, but that's what it looks like when it's all together. And the final two connections come out the bottom right here and go to this three-way 12-volt cigarette lighter adapter, which I have two devices plugged into right now. One of them is the laptop power supply converter, and that is plugged directly into one of the 12-volt cigarette lighter outlets. And the other one is the 12-volt to 110-volt inverter, which you see right here. This is a small one, 150 watts. So it is appropriate to run it off of a cigarette lighter adapter instead of running it off of short, fat cables like the 1000 watt inverter that we looked at a few moments ago. The wire coming out of the top goes over into the power strip, which enables me to plug in any number of small devices, as long as they don't total more than 150 watts. So cell phone charge adapters, 
electric shaver adapters, battery rechargers, small lights, especially compact fluorescent lights, you can plug four of those in and the adapter will not be stressed and neither will the rider or the rest of the equipment. So that completes the tour of the power board. That shows you how the power flows. Uh, the ultracapacitor has the most wiring associated with it, but basically there really is only the wire coming from the pedal generator going into it, and then the fused wire going back out into the meter, and from the meter down to the outlet. Now you might wonder why I don't have the wire from the pedal generator going through the meter into the ultracapacitor. If I had wired up the power board that way, the meter would read out the power that the pedal generator was generating instantaneously. The reason I didn't do that is because I put a meter like that on each of my pedal generators and that would make this one redundant. Instead what this meter does, which is a lot uh, more useful in my mind, is it measures how much power is being drawn by the different appliances that are plugged into the cigarette lighter adapter. So you can determine how much power each device uses by watching the meter. And you can do it when you're not even pedaling because the ultracapacitor will store enough energy for you to get off the bike and come around and read the meter if you want. And that worked out the way I wanted it to work out. You can also see an interesting effect and that is you can see the difference between what the devices want and what the pedal generator is generating. And the, uh, the reason that can be different is because the ultracapacitor can be absorbing or releasing power to help the devices with what they need or to store up the surplus power that the pedal generator is generating. So you can see a difference, sometimes a very large difference, between what's going into the power board and what's coming out of the power board and what handles that difference is the ultracapacitor. And by the way, a lot of these devices are held on with screws. The junction box is just screwed down. So is the cigarette lighter adapter. So is the power strip. But the small inverter, the laptop power supply, and the ultracapacitor are all just held on with two-sided Velcro. So they're basically stuck on and they can be removed pretty easily. So that's the tour of the power board. The wiring uh, looks intimidating, but really is not at all. It's very simple. It's a practical setup. The only thing I might do differently if I were to do it again is I think I would leave this wire a little bit longer and I would mount this. I would rotate it around like that so that the outlets faced either left or right because as it is, occasionally, if these aren't plugged in tightly, they'll fall out. So gravity is working against the uh, layout of the cigarette lighter sockets, but when I push them in good and firmly, they seem to work pretty well. But I would do that one part differently if I were to rebuild the whole thing a second time. And that's it for the power board.